Hello and welcome to another Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 update video where we're going to be taking a look at some of the big jumps we've been made, made in the last stream and there's been quite a few of them. There's been uh, lots and lots of exciting progress made. So let's take a look. The first big thing I was working on was the Deep Space Science 1 production and specifically starting off with the catalogues. And I got most of this built up in the last stream, so you'll have seen a lot of this before. We've got uh, along here, we've got the um, the nanomaterials being made and then we've got the four different types of data cards, well, the three different types of data cards that aren't being made somewhere off planet, being made boom, 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 down here, including this one, which is, this, this is the difficult one. And this one's been struggling due to a lack of crystals. But as you can see by this little trickle on the belt over here, we've had some come in finally, and I think we should be due a train any minute now that will bring, bring some more over and we can start making them. And once we've got those, that then allows us to start making the uh, catalogues up here with the new research servers. I've got, so I've got all of the all the data cards here now and everything everything should be working. And there we go, there's the train with the crystals. So that can unload, we've got them, them coming around here. And if we skip forward a little bit in time, you can see them being fed into these machines down here. So now these will kick in, these will start working, and these make the fourth data card type that are required. I still haven't really had a reliable enough supply of absolutely or both everything, including both types of Naquium, to be able to say, well, we've got enough of all of the things that we need now and I've got enough machines. But I did go in and put in I put in a couple of extra machines down here because that one was struggling, um, and I haven't. But I haven't top topped up any of the other ones yet because, as I say, we've not really been able to see the, see, the, see the balance point yet. But once they're running, they're coming up here. As you can see, they'll be fed into the into the machines, and we can then start to make the uh, the catalogs like this. And as they get produced, they'll then be passed out with these red inserters and dropped onto the belt, uh, much like this. There we go, where they can then trundle all the way down the belt and be put into, into a train system down here. So we've got the normal train system set, or actually we, ha we haven't got the normal train system quite finished yet. I need to put the limits on, the, on these belts to tell them to not load these warehouses up above uh, beyond about 500, because more than that is excessive. But then these, uh, these can then be loaded in, into the train here. We've got these uh, loads up, well, one, one, one doing uh, Deep Space Science Catalog 1, and the other three doing dead trees. But eventually, once we have um, enough, once we have all of the sciences in, we'll, we'll, I'll change the filters on these, so they'll be doing one, two, three, and four, so that works nicely. Then I put in an additional train that goes from here and tra tra travels all the way across the factory to up here in the science area where at the moment it seems to be stopped up here and has, has been unloading and for some reason hasn't been told to clear off again I'm not quite sure why not uh, you should be saying when when do you, well, here we go uh, yeah that's being passed to here which is then being sent to train okay why are you still here? You should have a circuit condition D equals one there. So, right. So we've got this. This this thing here is outputting one D as we'd expect because it's it's watching. Right. This is working in the same way as all of the other um, trains that are working do do the same sort of. They bring the catalogs over in the same way. We're subtracting one from the total content of whatever cattle whatever things it's supposed to bring in, and that means that whenever we run out completely of any one type of catalog in the warehouse here, it'll then pass the signal at minus one over onto here. This is looking for anything being less than zero, and then outputting one D. Which is then being passed to this uh, this this station, which should then pass it on to the train, um, and then the train should depart. So I'm a little bit puzzled as to why the train is not leaving, given that we've got a circuit condition here, and that, that is how you do that, isn't it? That all seems to be correct. So I'm not quite sure why that hasn't ticked over yet. But there's a distinct shortage of everything else that it needs at the moment anyway. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. But this is, has also been I've also gone in here and I've set it up to to stock up with uh, only one row of deep space catalogs, and we put row, uh, type two here, type three, type four. And so, from here, this, this brings us over to the next big thing I've been doing, which is setting up the whole deep space science production facility. And so, like all the other ones, down here we've got bio and material and energy and astro. They bring in the diff various different types of catalogues. Those are fed over. Now, we don't need to make in insights for these ones. There's no such thing as a deep space science insight, so we don't have to worry about those. But we still have the same sort of thing where you bring in a catalog, uh, not an insight, a significant data and an exotic material, and then those go into the machines here and then are made into the science packs. So it works in a very, very similar way. But one big difference is that you have to use the advanced research servers for this one rather than the, the, the normal, generic, boring research servers. And so they're a bit bigger, um, they've got a few more inputs, but basically it's, it's the same general idea. The other big difference is, I, I said you don't need to put insights in for these ones, and that is true, but instead of insights you have to put in neural gel, advanced neural gel, and that had to be produced somewhere else in, in decent enough quantities and brought over here. And we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a few minutes. But over here you can see I've got the uh, the final machines here. Uh, as usual, I've done the, the setup in, for, for the future ones as well. So we've got over here we're making Deep Space Science 1, then these will make Deep Space Science 2, 3 and 4 going across here. And so the idea is that we'll feed, feed those through here. The, the junk data cards will be passed out at the top, and then they'll be, and then they'll carry on through here. We'll take the take the tier ones in to make the tier twos, and then put the tier twos out onto the near side of the belt. 
Then again, take out the rubbish data cards here. Carry on along here, taking the tier 2s to make the tier 3s, which we can put on this belt, and taking the tier 3s to make the tier 4s. Uh, but that's quite a long way in the future. We're still a long, long way off actually being able to make the uh, those advanced science packs. But it's it's good to have the system in place and ready for, ready for, uh, ready for building that. And so the other thing you need with uh, Deep Space Science, to make the Deep Space Science pack, is you also need the exotic material for this, is a uh, Naquium plate. And you need ten of those, which is an entire ingot being ripped up into, into plates. So that's quite a lot. Uh, so I've put in a machine up here, which is pulling in uh, Naquium ingots, and also you have to pull in the heavy bearings, because they're a required part in order to make the, uh, make the Naquium plates. And so that's pulling both of those in, and then the, the bearings often come out to be reused. So I put in a little twisted uh, spaghetti thing here to make sure they come out, and they'll go on to the top side of the or the left side of the belt. It comes up here and becomes the top side. And then with this, uh, because I prioritised the splitter here, we can then use those before we use these ones. And so this this system here should just tick over nicely. And so far, it's given me quite a lot of the uh, Naquium plate, and we've been able to make quite a lot of science packs. As you can see here, we've made um, 168 with that one, 198 with that one, 278 with that one. So that's made a decent number of science packs. And those have, of course, then all just flowed off down these new belts that I've put in. They run all the way down here, and they will go into the labs at the bottom. And we've been able, so we've been able to do various different pieces of research, which I shall talk about in the next video, when I get onto which researches we've done in the last stream. And there's been quite a lot of them this time. It's been a bit more exciting than normal. Um, this took a little bit of putting together because it's a fairly complicated system. I did base I based it on these ones, but and then just sort of expanded it a little bit for the larger machines. Um, but I made a few mistakes on the way through and had to fix a few things and I had to put in some extra pipes and so on. But eventually we've got there, and I believe this system should work. I haven't seen any problems with it, um, but if you do, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, I'll deal with them for the next video. Bringing in the significant data was easy enough. It's just an extension of the of the belt that we we're using before, and those can be made elsewhere. Um, yeah, so this is this is now set up, built up, and working. To get all the bits and pieces in, I had to put in some new stations over here. So we've got one here for the uh, the Naquium ingots that are being brought over just from the spaceport, so that's really easy. We've got the catalogues being brought in here, as I discussed earlier, and I've started bringing in the advanced neural gel, and that was a little bit fiddly, um, because it turns out that we, did, we didn't have anywhere feeding advanced neural gel onto the train system yet, but that part was okay. I just came over here, so this is this is Mark's biological science, or biological science catalogue production area, and it's doing all of the, the weird squishy stuff, like making pots of goo and then doing various weird and strange things to them. And down here he's got a huge series of stations that are bringing in all of the inputs he needs for the various different um, different bits and pieces that are required for that. And I've put in an additional station right up at the top here that is collecting the advanced neural gel. As you can see there's only 62,000 in here at the moment because it's being produced quite slowly. Uh, we have filled the train up though and sent another train off so there's enough, there's, it's producing it fast enough but it is still not amazingly quick. And when I came along here, it wasn't fast enough at all. So over here, we had one of these machines that was making it. So I thought, okay, that's not making it fast enough. I'll put in a second one over here, and I'll put a speed module, a speed beacon on them as well to make it get even, even faster. And entertainingly, that means we're now producing the plague rockets at a very, very high rate of speed because we can do that at plus three hundred percent speed. Uh, but we've got twenty-six of them already, and that's more than enough for our purposes. So we probably won't be making any more of them. But anyway, yes, I put this together, and very quickly I realised that there wasn't remotely enough neural gel available, and it looks like we actually don't have we don't have enough um, of this one, the the other input, the other pink goopy input, uh, which is nutrient gel. So we're short of both of those for this one, uh, which is a little bit awkward. But anyway, we can we can can in theory at least pull those in and then produce produce the neural gel which goes out in these pipes. Um, but yeah, as I say, there wasn't enough of the neural gel, so I went came down here a bit and found okay, here is here is neural gel production, and there were three machines here at the time making it, and. That was woefully inadequate, as you can see. So I've, I've put in put in a few more of these, but they seem to have stopped. They've run out of yes, they've run out of nutrient gel as well. So that's the next problem in the in the in the chain. But I also put in quite a lot more machines. I've tripled the production here. I've gone all the way up to nine of them. And so when they, when this all kicks in, it can produce, produce it pretty quickly, and that's very nice. However, that very quickly ran through all of these bio samples that, we, that we, we've got along here, um, and we ran out of those. So I then sort of went tracing it back along the, along, the, along the belts, as you do in Factoria. This is what the game is basically about. Traced it all the way back to here, which is where the bio samples are being made, and they're being made from these pots of uh, green goo that are brought around here and then and upgraded to the uh, to, to bio samples. And I believe, uh, uh, oh, and also nutrient gel as well. So this is another place that uses that. And um, I was going to do some upgrades around here, but then I discovered no, actually it was just the inputs around here so this, this fortunately um, I didn't I didn't start fiddling with it because Mark has uh, balanced the whole thing so this one genetics facility and this however many uh, growth facilities work together in nice neat harmony the problem was that we didn't have any of these uh, uh, pink pots coming in down here so I traced that one back again you can you can see a bit of a running theme here and they come from down here and down here the problem was that we'd run out of iron and it turned, so I followed the iron belt back and it turned out the iron belt was coming straight out of this station here which was waiting for iron plates to be brought in because when this was when uh, Mark built this whole area up we had uh, down in the recycling facility 
we were producing, we were, were crushing all the scrap, and we're producing iron ore from it, which we were then cooking into iron plates, and we were then uh, then shipping out by train, uh, like this, this this train, in fact. So I probably should have dumped this first. I didn't think of that. Oh well, never mind. So this train was then was then bringing the iron plates up to here, putting them in here. But of course, we're not making the iron that way anymore. We we, we now have just have iron um, ingots available. And so I've upgraded this station or switched this station over to to pulling in iron ingots, as it has done. As you can see, we've got four thousand of them in there, and then chopping them down into the iron plates, which can be dribbled out here and then used to make the uh, make the uh, pots pots of goo over here. So this is kind of working. Um, but as I say, the, the problem does seem to be that we don't have enough nutrient gel. So let's carry on following that one back. Is that made further down? I can see the pipe going further down. Uh, yes, here we down here we're making the nutrient gel and to be honest, this seems to be running okay. I don't know I don't know what the problem is. All of the no actually not all the machines are running. There's a bit of a shortage of something. Um, we don't okay. We don't have fertilizer coming in quickly enough, uh, despite the fact that we have here. Yes, as you can see, we have a complete full space belt of fertilizer pouring in here. Uh, it's just that is apparently not enough. So we need to have that coming in a bit quicker if we want to keep up with the uh, with the nutrient gel. And I had a bit of a, uh, a discussion with this because it, it turned out um, that yeah, the new, the uh, fertilizer is pouring out of the station over here. Fine, we've got a decent supply of it, um, but it was it was struggling to keep up. And it turns out that was because um, well, it was coming in through th through the train system, and there was it was being brought up over here using this system. And so you can see here there is there's quite a lot of demand for fertilizer. There's quite a lot of it pouring through because the train has just been up and dropped some off. So that's being brought over here to the to the train systems over here, and we'll be ready. And then we're filling this train up, ready to, ready to take it over when we need some more. Um, I accused uh, Mike of having produced a silly system over here because it, I, I thought it was bottlenecked because there is one train that comes up and parks here that will then unload everything that's required by all of these different supply systems across here. And I thought that the train was running basically solidly and um, and therefore not able to bring up enough fertilizer to keep the biological systems happy. It turns out that actually I, I, I was wrong about that. It, it is bringing up, it, well, it is probably capable of bringing up enough, we shall find out. Um, and the problem was that we were only requesting about 500 at a time. And so it bring 500 up, they get put into the train over here and go, okay, can I have another 500? So it bring another 500 up, they flow over and they get put into the train and after that happened many many times over eventually we'd managed to fill this train up I and mean, you can see there it's uh, we, we can fit about uh, 1,000, 2,500, 2 5,000 into the train so it would take 10 journeys by the train over here to actually fill it up not because the train was full but because we weren't asking for enough at a time and so uh, yeah Mike has gone in he's, he's upgraded the, the request from 500 to about 2,000 I believe no, twenty thousand. So we should get a huge amount of it coming up, pouring into the into the into the warehouse over here, and eventually maybe that'll fill up. But at the moment, we do still seem to have a bit of a shortage of, um, of fertilizer. So um, that said, that said, if when we looked over here, there was a decent amount of it in the warehouse over here. However, however, it is now empty. So yeah, it's, it looks to me like we don't. We still, despite despite the upgrade, we don't. We still don't have the fertilizer coming through quickly enough, and it is just all getting pulled through here very, very quickly and turned into the uh, pink goop, which then goes fl flows off to be made into everything else. So there is still a bit of a problem here, and. Um, uh, it, but that, that said, that said, that said, I don't know how many that said I'm on at this point. <laughs> Once the tank over here fills up, and I could potentially link this up to here to say only pump through when there's less than 100,000 in, because you can only fit 60,000 into a train. So having more than, maybe even 75,000, having more than 75,000 in here is probably a bit overkill. So I can put that from there to there and tell this one to only pump through when advanced neural gel, that one, is less than 75k. And that'll, that'll mean that we won't end up with quite so much, we won't end up trying to make quite so much of it. And so at some point then that means these ones will calm down, which means the ones that are making the normal neural gel will calm down, which means the demands on the uh, on the bio samples will calm down, and therefore eventually the demand on the on the pink goop will calm down a little bit as well. So it may well be that we're just we're just filling buffers at the moment, and once that's full, the system will be quite capable of keeping up. Um, but we did have a bit of a rush on it, and it caused caused a few issues. I did also increase the pressure on the uh, cosmic water over here. So cosmic water is it's a bit of a weird one. So um, Mark had got it set up so the train would unload here as long as and, and, and these would never be more than about thirty thousand each or so, whatever, um, because we wouldn't call a train out until it had dropped below uh, one thousand over here. So that was sort of kind of fine. Um, but that meant when the uh, when the train was nearly due, there was very very little in these tanks, and that meant there was very very little pressure on the pipe coming around here. So to get around that, I've put this pump in here, which will try and top this one up and try and keep it at 30,000, which is two-thirds full, uh, well, 60% full. 
And so that means that then we have a decent amount of pressure on here because all these pipes are at about 60%. But there is still room for the, for the machines that output the cosmic water because Mark has a, uh, a scrap recycling facility over here which cleans up the dirty contaminated cosmic water and turns it back into clean cosmic water. So there is going to be a little bit of back pressure on this producing some and pushing it back into the system like this. Uh, so we need to always have some header space in this tank which is why I've set that to not completely fill it up. But having it at 60% means we do then have a decent amount of pressure on here which means the cosmic water can then flow out to wherever it's needed and run, all the systems will run. So we were having a bit of a problem somewhere, I think it might have been over here, where the pipes were virtually empty and that meant as soon as the machine started trying to slurp it through it would empty it and then it would take a little while for it to flow through. We had very very low flow rates and this should help quite a lot with that. And so at this point, I'd kind of got Deep Space Science 1 working. We were, okay, there was a bit of a shortage of the crystals, there are a few things that are running a bit slower than I would like them to, and it needs a bit of balancing and tweaking and so on. But essentially, we've got the, the uh, Deep Space Science Catalog 1s being made, we've got the Science Pack 1s being made. It's working, um, and it just needs sort of a bit of massaging of some of the numbers. Uh, so I started to take a bit of a look at the uh, broad Deep Space Science Catalog, also known as Deep Space Science 2. Um, and this one seems, it doesn't seem too bad. We're going to need to bring in some cryonite, which is a thing we can, that's, that's trivial, we can just get a train to do that. We're going to need annihilation data, which needs particle stream and antimatter stream. Okay, well we have the pink clouds already, that's fine, they're in this pipe that runs down the middle of here. And the antimatter stream isn't too difficult to make, we just need particle stream and, uh, and thermofluid um, and do it in a, in a material fabricator. We'll probably end up doing that in cloud storage just to have, have everything in the same place and then ship it over by train. But then we'll have antimatter stream and that'll be nice and easy. So that'll allow us to make the annihilation data. Then there's hyperlattice data. So that requires nanomaterials, which we've got. It requires a lot of Naquium plate. That's almost two and a half ingots per uh, per science pack. So that's going to be that's going to be tricky. But man, but man, and there's nothing new and difficult in there. Then we have singularity data. Okay, so that, that requires entanglement data, which means I'm going to have to bring that over from the energy science area in, in, in a train, so I'll need to put that in. That's not too much of a problem. It also requires naquium cubes. Uh, now, naquium cubes are made from nanomaterial, vulcanite block, naquium plate, and particle stream. So, we've got, again, these are all things that we have here. So this isn't going to be too difficult either. We can bring in all... We've got all these things together. The problem is that, again, this is 12 naquium plates, so 1.2 uh, ingots per, uh, per cube we make. And we're going to rip through these cubes, well, one per 50% one per chance of getting a science pack. Oh, but we do have a 50% chance of getting a cube back. So it's about, so one cube per science pack. So that's uh, slightly more expensive than the, the, the ones we've done so far, but not enormously so. Then we need the time-space anomaly data, which also requires an aquium cube. And this one you don't get back if, the, if it fails, and there's only a 60% chance of it succeeding. Um, and it also then requires a load of the astro science cards as well. So I'm going to have to bring those over here. And the, the odds of these all being close together over at where, where they're being made in astro is pretty small. So there's going to be a bit of spaghetti to pull all of these through the um, through the belt system and try and get them all into the same place so I can shove them in a train together and bring them over here. But this sort of thing isn't completely new to me. I had to do something very, very similar with the um, when I was doing putting the matter science together and we need to bring in these two uh, material science cards. So over on the oh, way over there in, in material science, I've got a train system system where we're pulling in those two types of data cards here like this, they're getting put into a warehouse then loaded into a train that comes over here whenever it needs them and, and that works, it's, it's not been too difficult to put together I'm, uh, so yeah I, I think I think it should be fine with this, it's not going to cause me any trouble putting that together it's just going to be more more random bits and pieces that need to, be, need to be pulled in so not too worried about that and that's the bottom of the list so uh, th that, that's not too difficult and then when you've got those you can then use them to make the Deep Space Science Pack 2's that also requires an Aquium Cube so we're going to need a decent number of them but they're, they're, hopefully they won't be too difficult and so so I put together the system down here, which is bringing, which is now making my naquium cubes. So it's bringing in the uh, the ingots here. They're being uh, chopped down into into plates, passed along here into the machines. And as as ever, we've got the uh, these these belts shouldn't be here. That was from uh, from a mistake I made earlier. Um, so we've got the rollers being brought in here to squash the uh, naquium plates out of the naquium ingots, and then a bypass on the bottom here. And this is this is reasonably clever, rather um, because I've got an inserter loading here and a loader loading here. This one functionally takes precedence over this one, so we'll be so any of these that come out and to be reused will immediately be sent back into the machine, but will only load in with the inserter if we start to run quite low on them. So this is going to this is going to work quite nicely for making my Naquin plates. And as you can see, I've got the um, the nano material being brought down a belt here. I've got the vulcanite being brought in on the belt over here, and put and then they're just going straight into the machine here. This is working nicely. As you can see, we've made 
some cubes. There's not an enormous number of them, and it's not an enormously quick process. But as I discover I need more and more of them, then I can just put more, more and more machines in across here. These are, of course, the material fabricators, the ones that don't take uh, speed modules, so we can't make them any faster, we can't beacon them or anything like that. If we need more of these, we just have to put more and more and more and more and more and more machines in. But we'll see, we'll wait and see how many we need before, we, uh, before, before I expand this at all. As you can see, they're coming out at a a steady trickle from this machine. That's not that's not too bad. So from looking at these recipes, my impression is that um, that Deep Space Science One is all about telling you to go out and, and obtain an aquium. So you have to go out to your asteroid field. You have to start digging it up. You have to do all the processing of it, and that's a massive undertaking. You've seen how long it took me to get to get the, to get to this stage to get all of that up and running. And then Deep Space Science Two is not so much about making things more. Uh, it's not much more complicated, it just requires a lot more naquium. And so I suspect there's a reasonable chance that we're going to find that the amount we're producing at the moment isn't going to be enough, and that we're going to need to start to dig more of it up, get more of it processed, get speed the whole thing up, or alternatively put up with science being done a little bit more slowly. But we'll wait and see how that goes, because I mean, at the moment, well... It's, it's ticking over nicely. We're producing these uh, these uh, cubes as, as we go. We'll see. We'll see how the production uh, struggles and whether whether it is actually a problem. Because you never know. We might find that we've got enough of it. Deep Space Science Three. Well, we're not even going to think about that for a little while because that's going to be extremely complicated, and I think I know what's coming. So uh, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut about that. While I've been messing around with all of that, Mark has been doing some um, some personal gear upgrades for, for all of us, in fact. He's been being very generous about it and setting up decent supply runs for, for everything. And so along here, you can see we're making all of the various different uh, things, to, well, a lot of the various things that go into the suits. So across the top here, we've got the uh, personal laser sniper defences, uh, up all the way to so making the Mark 1s, to make the Mark 2s, to make the Mark 3s, to make the Mark 4s, which go into the box here. And then the same thing with the personal laser submachine defences. So these, these ones fire quickly, these ones have longer range and do more damage. Um, I think as damage damage over time goes, they're pretty, pretty much identical, um, but we, you've got either range or fire rate, depending on which, which type of weapon you go for. And again, so we're making the one, two, three, four, and this is something where we are we are building all of these from um, with, with logistics bots, which is a little bit dirty, but to be honest, I don't think I care too much. Uh, it, it, it's worth doing because it makes it makes the whole construction nice and simple around here. And they are tele they are all telescopic recipes, so you need, in order to make the Mark II you need the Mark I, in order to make the Mark III you need the Mark IIs and so on all the way up there. But they're not expanding recipes like the uh, modules are, so so to make a Mark III takes uh, one Mark II, and to make a Mark IV takes one Mark III, and so, and so on all the way down, up or, up or down the chain, whichever way you go. He's also making the ablative armour across here, so these ones are quite nice, all the way up to, what are you, you're a, um, presumably a Mark, a Mark V, nice. So um, each of these gets you more and more and more armour the, the further up you go, um, and, and these, but these, the ablative armours, it, it's, it's interesting with space exploration, there are two types of armours. Um, you can either make the, um, the ablative armours, these ones, which is what we're, do, we're doing at the moment, or you can make the shields, and the shields are much, much more, much, much stronger, they defend you much better, so you can see there, it's, uh, you get a thousand hit points from a Mark IV energy shield, but from a Mark V uh, ad ad adapt oh, adaptive, not ablative, sorry, adaptive armour, you only get 500 hit points. However, the energy shield is not compatible with the jetpack. So if you've got an energy shield on, it will take damage whenever you're flying. So that makes it more or less useless in uh, in space exploration because you tend to spend all of your time fl flitting around with your jetpack. So we haven't been making these, we've been using these ones. However, because these are much, much tougher, if you're going into a pyramid, then I think having the energy shields could be quite useful. So we might start making these ones as well. Uh, we, we, shall, we shall see. Then over at the side here, we're upgrading the the, the suits. So because we've all already got um, space suits, and I think they're being made on the ground as well, sort of the Mark One thruster suits, we've only got the Mark Twos and the Mark Threes being made here. So if you want one, you have to come along here, stand next to it, take your clothes off, shove them in the box, and then sit there shivering and trying not to asphyxiate while it makes while it builds your more advanced space suit and, and then spits it out into this box over here. And then you can grab it and put it back on again and start loading it up with all of your all, all of the fun toys. And so I did exactly that. I now have a, a Mark III spacesuit on, and that has allowed me to fit a load more stuff into it. So, I, to be honest, I just grabbed a load of stuff without really thinking about it. I've, I kept the, um, the jetpacks that I had in my previous suit and the portable RTG that I had, uh, and I grabbed a load of guns and, and defences as well, so I can go out and do little bits of combat should I feel the urge. But at the moment, I'm kind of... It's, it's a bit imbalanced because I've only got this Mark I battery. Uh, it's a big personal battery, but it is still a Mark I big personal battery, which isn't very good, and only an RTG generator. So between them, they're, then they'll, they're going to struggle to power all of this stuff for more than sort of a, a split second. Uh, it's fine with all the jetpacks, but the weapons are going to rip through my battery very, very quickly. Um, because it's a tiny, tiny battery. So at some point, I need to upgrade to this, the portable fusion reactor, 
which Mark has also built over here. So there's, there's, there's several, there's, a, there's a, a steady supply of them being made available here. But these use fuel, unlike the one I'm using at the moment. So I think when, when, if and when I do go off to do combat, I shall rejig all of the stuff in my suit and upgrade it and, and switch over to the the ones that consume fuel but produce a lot more power. Because just for robots, the what the one I've got at the moment is absolutely fine. The other part of the upgrade is down here, and this is where Mark's been making all the other stuff for suits, the stuff that can be made down on the ground or is made from sort of ground level type stuff. And so over here we've got these massive um, batteries, what are you, you're a tier 3 um, battery pack, so having a couple of those in my suit would allow it to last, make things run a bit longer. We've got the fuel cells for the uh, for the, for the fusion reactor being made down here, so in this in this box we have the um, we have a decent number of DT fuel cells, so those, get, can, get, those can be chucked into the, uh, into the fusion reactors. Uh, we've got goodness knows what else down here. Um, what, what even are you? Oh, you, that's electric engines for over here. That's, okay. And here we're making, what are we making here? We're making heavy water. Okay. Um, sure, why not? Uh, for, the, for the fuel cells again. And we're also making upgraded robot ports and jetpacks as well. So I think a trip to the ground might be in order at some point where I can pick up some of this stuff. I, I can start filling my suit up with jetpack threes instead of jetpack twos and with the occasional one would be, would be rather nice and it'd mean I'd be able to fly around a bit quicker. Um, not that I do a huge amount of stuff manually, but it'd be nice to have my have everything all the, all my toys upgraded to the latest versions, basically. <laughs> That'd be rather nice. But that's not all that Mark has been doing. Um, in the last stream, um, part, perhaps a little bit because they were running out of things to do, perhaps, um, because, I've been do because I'm doing the deep space science. So there's this thing, in mid-game space exploration, there are the four different t uh, types of science you can be doing. You can be doing astro, material, bio, and energy. And so because there were four of us, we picked one of those each, and so we were working through them more or less in parallel. And each one of those has its exotic material as well, so we're each working through those in parallel. So I go off and get the beryllium, Mike could go off and get the iridium, Tristan was after the holmium, Mark went after all of the, uh, the Vita stuff. And so that meant we could work quite nicely in parallel. And sometimes there'd be a problem, like something would explode, or we'd need more vulcanite, or we'd need more cryonite, or we'd need more, uh, or we'd need need more iron or copper or anything like that, and one of us could then stop off and go off and do that. But then we always always had the, the sort of the main core thing that we were doing that we could then get back to. Now we've got onto a single type of science because I went off to do Naqu Naquium and then to do deep space science. To an extent, there's not been quite so much stuff for other people to do, which is why Mike went off to uh, to go off to Andragon and start looking into stone and miscellaneous stuff like that. Well, Tristan and Mark have been doing quite a lot of sort of going around and polishing things up and making them work a bit better, and now they've sort of kind of got had enough of that or they've done everything they can and so they've been going out and and and, um, and causing causing death and destruction and mayhem and so on and they've been largely doing that with the new um, laser artillery turrets that we that we uh, researched a little while ago and have now started to make so these things have a ludicrous range if I turn the range on up there you can see they've got yeah, a hell of a range. So the, all these biters here, for example, would be dead. Yeah, they've all been wiped out because they're within range. And then there's the ones over here. These ones aren't quite in range yet. So presumably what's going to happen is that next time when he carries on with this, Tristan's going to put in another couple of turrets over here and then another couple. And then the, all these biters over here are going to be an easy range of the turrets and they're going to get absolutely wiped out. And these things are absolutely devastating. They're really lethal. They do huge amounts of damage. They can take out a behemoth biter in one and a bit shots, and they do splash damage, and they're just generally really, really dangerous and effective. Um, and so we've been, yeah, they, they've they been pushing out this way. I think this, this area over here on this side has been Tristan's, and as you can see, he's pushed all the way over to, is that the edge of the planet? Yes, that is the edge of the planet over here. So he's made it all the way out to here, where he set up this little, uh, small defensive area. Uh, little turrets, big turrets, and power in the middle. Um, and that has allowed him to extend out the, the Roboport network, well, gradually extend the Roboport network out, except that it seems to be cut off here by this lake. Uh, so I think he's trying to Roboport the entire, entire planet as um, as, as, as we go. Um, only only got out to here so far. But yeah, Tristan's been going out this way, as you can see, by all the, all the uh, covered t t turret areas, and by all the sort of the death and destruction that's been happening out here. Mark has been going out the opposite way, so he's made it out to the edge of the planet here and has started to work his way around. And as I said, the um, the laser turrets, are, or the laser artillery turrets, are quite dangerous. They do splash damage, which is how um, Mark has managed to get himself killed a couple of times. So we were doing so well until the last couple of streams with 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 so few deaths, but now, yeah, Mark stood in the wrong place and got shot by one of his own laser turrets, which has to be a little bit embarrassing. Uh, we've also lost a few turrets here and there as they've been blowing each other up because, again, splash damage and splash damage is dangerous. Still not quite as dangerous as the um, as the plasma turrets in uh, in uh, Angel Bob's, but you know they get getting that way. So it looks like Mark is going to be trying to carry on pushing his way round the planet, and Tristan has suggested that they're going to meet at the North Pole, which I guess is here, and. Um, on a circular planet, I guess fine. So they're going, they're going, to, yeah, they're going to work their way around the edge, meet up here, and presumably their their intention is to go in through and just kill kill absolutely all of the biters, which is going to be quite a big job. But 
you know, it'll keep them out of trouble for a little while, I suppose, and give them something to do while while other sciences are happening. We shall see how long they they find it fun for before they get get a bit fed up and decide they want to go off and do something a bit more factorioy. There's um as uh, Mike can probably testify, there's only so much time you can spend doing combat before you just yearn for a salad or a sa or something else. So just something else to do. There's a slight difference in approach on, on these two. So uh, Mark has very much cleared out a corridor out this way and then started to work up, up along here. There's every, everything is dead across here as well, and I'm not quite sure why. Maybe that's maybe that's from the nuclear artillery. It could well be. I'm not sure. What, what's the range on that? Let's have a look. Okay, in manual mode, there's only actually no. That I don't know what's killed all these biters in here, um, because there's no there's no artillery cannons in range, unless there were some that have been removed. I, I don't I don't know. I'm not quite sure why all these biters are dead. Oh, maybe that's from the the beams, because we've we've still got the glaive beams wandering around the planet like uh, like this, also doing damage to the biters. So it's it's really a def it's definitely a many many prong. Attack on them, and they're um, and they're certainly suffering from it. But we don't want to use a plague rocket on Norvis because it seems it just feels wrong somehow. We want to be we want to be able to come back to Norvis and be a nice, happy, safe place where we can take our helmets off and breathe the fresh, clean air without uh, gasping and choking to death. So as I said, having um, other people doing the, uh, the, the we're concentrating on the science at the moment has meant that there's been time for Tristan and Mark to be working on little little problems scattered around the base and fixing those up. And Tristan noticed that one of the signals that was being passed around the uh, passed around the facility had some um, science packs on it and when when it shouldn't have done and so he's gone off and fa he found those and he put them back into the system uh, back into the system so they can be burnt up and used as science so that that's good he's also tidied up the uh, requester chests that were across here that were pulling in various different um, science packs in order to dump them into the into the into the lab here for to uh, churn through them while we were well, um, and just get get rid of them so they weren't so weren't clogging the place up a bit and I think he might have, yes, it was, it was along here, that there are additional chests here that are unloading the uh, any excess uh, tier 1 or tier 2 um, energy sciences, and presumably over here somewhere tier 3 and tier 4, but I, although I can't see them, maybe I didn't, maybe I just didn't, straight up didn't leave room for them, uh, I don't think I did, and presumably so, so, so similar for, the, for other sciences as well. So in theory, if anything gets demolished, so some science packs end up in the, in the uh, robo network, they will be brought out to these blue chests and put back into the system, so they're not just sitting around being wasted, so that's nice to have. There was a problem with making the mirrors over here, which was da simply down to there not being enough glass being brought up. So he's increased the uh, requ I mean, the increased the amount we're requesting. So now the train will bring up more each time it comes. Um, despite that, we seem to still have. Oh no, we haven't run out of glass. There's plenty, of, plenty of it down here. I was looking. It's um, this one, biofuel, something fuel that we've run out of. I'm not quite sure what that's even needed for. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere though. So I don't know. I'm not quite sure why that's there at all. Down on Kothar, Mike informs me that the uh, the mineral water train, this one here, had been set to manual, and he's accusing me of this because it said "last monkeyed with" by me. Um, I'm not sure. I don't remember doing that, I, but I probably had a good reason for it at the time. I'm sure something was very, very broken. But anyway, he's turned it back on again, and that has meant the mineral water started to flow again, which means, in theory, the uh, well, I was going to say in theory the iridium's flowing, but it doesn't. It doesn't actually seem to be. Where's the problem here? Okay, it looks like we've run out of uh, enriched vulcanite again. So that's um, an interesting problem. I wonder where that is. So. There's a little bit of it up here, but this train is not remotely full. At the other end, there is no spaceship here. Maybe it's because there's enough of it in, in uh, Norbit at the moment that the ship is having trouble unloading and not leaving. Yes, here we go. So we've got, yes, we've actually got completely caught up on Iridium. That's amazing. So this, where, this warehouse is full, this warehouse is full, these two are full, and they're all full of Iridium. That's ama immense. And so this this one here can't unload, and so this, but therefore the spaceship can't leave until it's finished unloading another three and a bit, just over 3,000 um, Iridium. And then once it does that, it's got, yeah, it's got loads of, the, it's got 24,000 enriched vulcanite on it, so it'll take Take all of that over. The train will bring it down. It'll be shipped over and, and, and put in the right place uh, down here. So it'll be brought then brought down, and the system can run again. So yeah, we've stopped making iridium, but it's not because there's a problem on Kothar. It's just because we have enough iridium. Uh, we, we've, we've, we've caught up. That's 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 fantastic. We do also seem to have quite a lot of train. Well, we, a moment ago we had quite a lot of trains parked on the rails here, but they all seem to have gone now. So I guess that was a maybe it was a, just a transient problem. So I'm not gonna, I'm not going to complain about that either. Tristan says that a train did run out of uh, fuel somewhere on 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 Kothar, which is now sorted out. It was somewhere in the southwest of the main base, but he managed to get some fuel out to it. Probably with that's probably what no, it's not what this belt is. I don't know what this belt is. Oh, that's that's filters. Um, it was probably with some sort of re really really long belt. that's managed to chuck some more fuel in it, get the train going, and he sorted the problem out. So. Well done there. And down on Norvis, Marcus cleaned up a couple of mines. So there was an iron mine somewhere around here that's now gone, and there was a stone mine as well that had been de completely depleted. And is now so he's, he's he's cleared them up. I there's there's no chance of me ever finding those, but it doesn't actually matter. I can just tell you that a couple of mines have been pulled up and removed. So you know, just generally keeping the place tidy so we can uh, we, we can we can build more stuff out there should we need to in the future. But at the moment, things seem to be ticking over quite nicely. We have admittedly stopped making uh, stopped doing science because we're waiting for some more deep space science packs to be made, but 
Um, the system is, yeah, so the system is, is somewhat idle, but it does seem to be working. When it kicks in, when everything's running, we seem to have the stuff that we need. So I'd say things are going well here. And I think oh, that's a nice positive note to end the video on, so I shall uh, say thank you for watching. I'll be back in a couple of days on Monday with the other half of this update, where we shall talk about some of the other things that have been going on, shipping stuff around and other planets and that sort of thing. And also all the exciting new research we've been doing, because there's been quite a lot of it since the, uh, in, the in the last stream. So that's something to look forward to. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that. Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday as well with the uh, the next Satisfactory stream where I should be building trains and that. Um, I've, I've finally researched the monorail, so we're going to be putting some of those in, and that's going to be very exciting because everybody likes trains, especially me. And then, of course, back on Thursday for some more Factorio K2SE streaming uh, where we'll carry on with all the things we've been talking about today. Uh, so, yeah, as I say, make sure you're subscribed. There's lots, always lots happening on the channel. Uh, check out the GTA videos as well because they're fun and all the tutorials and things. Lots and lots of lots and lots of content, lots to see, lots to do, lots to watch. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.